Secretary of the Navy, James Ford. Mount McKinley and is greeted by Vice Admiral Blandy, Commander of Task Force One. The Navy Secretary will be among observers witnessing the experiment. Preparations are now complete and crews abandon their ships. Shown here is Captain Low A. Sibby, commanding officer of the venerable old battleship USS New York. Everything is in readiness for the test able experiment as military and scientific personnel leave the target area. On April Day minus one, Command ships proceed to an area approximately 14 miles from the lagoon where the blast can be safely observed.
hundreds of cameras of almost every type that both record the Able Day blast are installed in photographic planes. Among these is the world's largest still camera with a 48-inch telephoto lens, so powerful that it can produce a distinct photograph with the face of an 8-inch clock from a distance of 1,300 feet. The overall weight of the camera is so great that a lift is required to carry it to its place in the plane. Replacing the machine guns in the 200 eyes and the illusion so created is actually a fact. For through these lenses will pass a lasting picture of the devastating power of the atomic bomb. Flying crew listens as General Ramey stresses the importance of the test and wishes those who will participate the best of luck. The serious business of briefing the crews is handled by experienced staff officers who have carefully planned each move, takeoff times, flying altitude, rendezvous points, target designations, emergency procedure, control regulations, all are explained so that each plane will be at the right place at the precise moment. focus on Dave's dream at the far end of the strip. 
As a safety measure, all personnel other than those absolutely essential for operational needs have been evacuated to a point of safety while Dave's dream takes to the runway. The frightening missiles cut dominantly in the bomb day. Observers scarcely breathe as they watch the gleaming fuselage of the bomb carrier start its dangerous run for the sky. Roaring down the runway, the magnificent aircraft holds the entire island suspended in breathless wonderment. Finally, with one smooth motion, the plane leaves the ground and starts its climb into the morning sun. On their flagship, Mount McKinley, Admiral Blandy and General Kepner pass the word, and the able day phase of Operation Crossroads is underway. Photographic planes orbiting high above the target fleet all will record the actual effects of the plan. The stage is set. Dave's dream is on its bomb run.
In this field of blast, recorded from a camera tower on Bikini, the suction caused by the explosion can be seen pulling the soot from the ship's stacks into the center of the rising column. The towering cloud column rose to a height of almost eight miles. Bikini 
Inspection parties make a preliminary appraisal of the damage to the target fleet. Burning from fires started by the low order detonation of torpedo warheads is the aircraft carrier independent. The light carrier was heavily damaged. For the blast struck the ship on the port quarter, warped, buckled and carried away light plating, and pushed up the flight deck so that it looked like a rooftop. The Independence class carriers are built on lightly constructed cruiser type hulls, which accounts in part for the heavy damage.
the firing ship USS Cumberland Sound, the Los Alamos group of the Manhattan Engineer District enter the timing laboratory where the radio transmitters and specially constructed instruments for detonating the bomb are located. Timing laboratory scientists pass into the master control room. Dr. Marshall Holloway, leader of the Los Alamos group, unlocks and personally throws one of the master transmitter switches. The timing laboratory is a complex interlocking system of radio transmitters, timing recorders, and scientific apparatus. As peak hour approaches, generators are started, transmitters warmed up, wrap cards on time recorders change, and everything made ready for the blast.
and from a photographic plane flying directly over the point of detonation, this scene shows the throat of the spherical crown of water and debris. In a few moments, the aerial shock wave that has been created by the detonation of the bomb will reach the plane. Note the effect on the camera when the wave strikes. Five days after the blast. Oh! 